one of the most interesting things that I found, though, was at the end of the day, there were these PCMCIA cards, now we call them PC cards, that were the place that the machine wrote the results to. And if you think about it, a voting machine is a very simple program, right? X equals X plus one, right? You just, somebody votes for that candidate, increment the counter by one. Um, but there's a few hundred thousand lines of, of code to do that. And at the end of the day, the totals are on this PC card. And part of the process is you take the cards out of each machine. And you've got to remember that, you know, despite, I guess, in that time I was in my 30s. Um, and I, I brought the average age down by about 60 years, of the poll workers, <laughs> right? So they were all elderly, retired. That's who tends to do this. And so, and I'm the computer science professor, and I'm young, so they wanted me to do everything. They were afraid to touch the computers. Only a couple of them actually knew who I was from, like, the, from the media and all that. The other, and I didn't say anything to anyone about it that day. Um, and so I, I took the cards from the machines one by one. We had about six voting machines, and I held them in my hand, and I thought, this is, these are the votes right here for my entire precinct for the whole day. Now, I have seen the source code for these machines, so I know I could write one of these. I could have made one at home that had whatever results I wanted, and I didn't get vetted to become an election judge. Nobody did a background check on me or anything. I just signed up, went to the training. They're happy to have you, especially a young person. So um, here I am holding all of these results, thinking you know, I could do a swap. I could put these in my pocket, and now here's how I want this precinct to vote. And that's kind of scary because you know, the cryptography that was used to protect these wasn't actually protecting the votes. One of the interesting things I thought is cryptography was used so incorrectly in these voting machines that it was scary. For one, they were only encrypting the audits uh, from the, the audit information in the machine and putting it on there. Second, think about this as a, as a security architect. Do you want the cards that have the votes on them to have anything encrypted on them? My first suspicion, if I saw that, would be that there's code on there, right? Because it's encrypted. We can't get at it. I don't want anything that I can't look at that's not transparent going into this voting machine, which could then maybe decrypt some code from it and run it. And so the voting machine might pass all the audits, but now the card's introducing some code to it. So they were using bad cryptography, broken cryptography, incorrectly for the wrong things. I mean, it was, it was really, really horrible. So. What do you, what do you, if you're sitting talking to the president, what, what do you, what do you say? So what, what should we do? So things have come a long way since 2003, 2004. Uh, today, only six states are using fully electronic voting machines, and 36 states have partial. So one of the uh, security measures that we have in our elections is that it's up to the states to decide how they're going to vote. This is a good thing because if every state had one universal system and there was something wrong with that system, then one attack could bring everything down. So the idea with diversity is that the Georgia system might be really bad, but it will only affect Georgia. And even within many states, uh, the counties can set up their own voting machinery. And so a lot of states have different systems in different places. Um, the number one thing that the voting academic community that I'm part of yeah. uh, decided to go after, um, we, had, we had a decision to make, right? We knew that there was a big problem. We knew that this was a problem that was not always easy to explain to people who were not technical, but were the ones making the decisions. And so we had to pick our fight. There were a lot of battles we could pick. Um, the cryptographers were all designing these super fancy, crypto verifiable universal systems, yeah. but I, I could barely understand it, much less explain it to someone. And so in a voting system, you need for the least educated common denominator part of the population to believe that it's secure and that it's trustworthy. And a bunch of academics saying, trust me, we did the math, it works, is not necessarily a feel good thing. So we decided that the battle we were going to fight is we want paper ballots. We thought that was universally understandable. You have a piece of paper and you put your vote on it and then you count it. And I will say this, that I think that we largely won that. Most of the country, including all of Maryland now, have paper ballots. The problem, we still have some problems though. We still have some very big problems. 99% of the paper ballots in the US recent election were counted by a machine. Okay, so we still have the problem that if that code were compromised or rigged or problematic or even buggy, 
we might get the wrong answer. And so in addition to paper ballots, uh, we've designed, uh, and I say we, my academic community collectively, has designed statistical uh, tests to decide how many precincts have to be recounted. And it's not enough, I'll tell you some of the stupidest ideas that I've ever heard came out of this voting thing. So I was in a hearing and one of the director of elections was explaining how they do recounts. They had electronic machines and they say, you want to recount paper ballots, we can do it. And, and it's like, how? Okay, well, we have our results in the machine. Let's say it says 500 results for candidate A and 300 for candidate B. We print the machine, the voting machine with the results, prints out ballots to match the total inside it, and then they hand count them. <laughs> I mean, that is the absolute most ridiculous thing I've ever heard, right? You know, if you've got the wrong results in this machine, printing those wrong results and then hand counting them is not going to fix anything, right? So, um, so the idea is we needed to come up with a method for running an election that could be accepted, understood, and secure. And we think it's paper ballots with some statistical amount of surprise recounts. Very important that you not determine before the election where you're going to do the audits, right? Because then you only don't cheat there. And so what you do is when the election is over and the polls close, you randomly pick a bunch of precincts. That randomness had better be secure. Uh, Ron Rivest, the RNRSA from MIT, very involved in, in all these efforts, suggested DICE. You know, just have a yeah. public showing, a bunch of people come. You know, as someone who plays poker, I can think of like loaded dice and all these other problems. If you could predict in advance where the random auditing will happen, you could cheat in the election, right? So we need to find a way, maybe ping pong balls popping up just like they do in the lottery, something like that. And they're not doing it. They're not doing random audits. And so 99% of the votes are paper ballots are counted by machines that are not being audited. So we're not there yet, but we're in a much better position now than we were when we had a fully electronic. Let, let's forget for a minute about the Diebold source code. Let's say that Diebold had designed perfect source code, right? They had a bunch of really good programmers. They did QA, and there were absolutely no th nothing I could have pointed to in that source code that was problematic. This would still be the absolute worst possible way to vote, right? You go up to a computer, the computer is sitting there all day, and people are coming up and voting, and at the end of the day, the computer is telling you who won. There's no reason to trust a system like that. You cannot do recounts. You cannot do audits. You just basically have to believe what the machine said. And so I think they actually did us a favor by having such a poor software that it allowed us to raise the consciousness and say, these machines are really bad. We didn't have to argue, these really good machines are a bad concept. We had to just say, these machines are terrible. Let's use paper. 